Oh, hi there. <laughs> yes, I'm just working on this database, uh, which is to do with early British record labels. I've begun this series of YouTube videos about early British record labels in a rather chaotic way, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, but there is some system uh, underlying it. And now that I've retired, um, I want to build up a database of all early British labels between 1898 and about 1923. Um, and so it, it is by no means finished. It's probably half done. Um, but one of the labels, the label we're going to look at tonight is Pioneer Records. And if we go down this list, C, D, E, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, and of course it ends with Xonophone, you, you guessed. Um, but if we go back up to Pioneer, which is uh, here, and go across, we've entered certain basic data. The label began in January 1914, it finished in 1915, very short-lived, and then the next column is a reference to where we may find more about it. And it reads, as does almost all the entries in this column, FA, that's the initials of Frank Andrews, who is uh, the doyen of British uh, discographers that have researched above all into the early uh, British labels. So anybody interested in it as I am uh, has this immense debt of gratitude to Frank who has spent 40 years researching all this early stuff from uh, primary sources in, in London and various um, patent, trademark registries, British Library, all sorts of things. Um, and then it says next to Frank Andrews, FTR 33. Well, FTR is for the record, uh, which is the uh, magazine or journal of the City of London Phonograph and Gramophone Society, which is de facto the British National Society for phonographs, gramophones, and the cylinders and discs which are played on them. And so in their magazine number 33, Frank has written about Pioneer Records. Um, I've entered this data here. The proprietor was J.L. Blum, 220 Old Street, London. And the manufacturer was in effect Blum and Company because he caused them to be made. Um, who pressed them? Well, there were some firms in Germany, but after the beginning of the Great War in August 1914, they were pressed by the Disc Record Company, Rosslyn, Crescent, Kenton, Middlesex. Um, and as to regards the source of the masters, there were many different sources of masters. And um, here is FTR 33, and this is the article that Frank wrote about Pioneer Records, from which I extracted the basic information from the database. Uh, and it's a Pioneer record we're going to have a listen to. Well, here we are, ready to get to work on our Pioneer record. Here it is. Um, it's one of those with a black label. Some of them have red labels. I think they may be the ones pressed in Germany. And, um, but what's the source of the master? Well, as you can see, the, uh, the record is credited to the Pioneer Military Band. Um, but actually, that's quite wrong. Uh, it isn't a military band at all. Well, the obvious thing to do is to look for the uh, master number on the record and see if we can trace it. And here, on uh, in type, raised, it says 031314. 031314. Where could that have come from? So where could master uh, 031314 have come from? Well, happily, thanks to this 300-page book by another great... British discographer Mike Langridge, which lists all uh, British Odeon records between about 1905 and 1915 or so. Um, there's a supplement at the back which details um, records which came from ARC in the USA. That's the American Record Company, not the American Record Corporation, which was 20 odd years in the future. And um, California Dance is actually not a military band, it is a clarinet solo uh, by, um, here it is, um, 03134, Pierre Leo. And it was, it's California dance, the composer is G.W. Gregory, and uh, by checking it out, I found that um, this Pierre Leo did record this piece for a number of 
uh, labels in the USA uh, besides ARC. So let's transfer it. Um, the record is slightly off centre, but I've, I think I've flicked it into uh, flicked it into place, and I've chosen an 0028 TE stylus uh, to transfer it with. So we just kick in the um, the device, and off we go. Okay, I've processed the file, here it is. We always transfer records at 78.26. The American standard seems to have taken over from the um, 50 hertz European standard, but no matter, we know what it is. And uh, if we need to look at the pitch, we look at it later. And now, unfortunately, my digital keyboard has broken down. It won't work anymore. So, and I'm not showing off, believe me. Uh, I have to fall back on the clarinet to check this one. And fortunately, it's a bit rough at the beginning. <laughs> But there's a long piano intro and the, 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 the bad stuff is gone by the time the clarinet comes in. And what's interesting is that when it comes in, it comes in here uh, on this, um, on this um, lovely low C for the clarinet. So whoever wrote the piece has given the player a jolly good platform from which to launch himself into it, which is, you know, very good. And it is in, in B-flat concert. <laughs> So, it's great. Um, now, I've got here my old 1936 Boozy Norks 10-1 clarinet, which I've had made a special mouthpiece which makes it slightly sharp. So, if I just, um, I haven't played for weeks, I'm retired, I'm supposed to be retired. <laughs> like to lower uh, Pierre Leo about 1%. Um, I mean, you know, at 78, I mean, these records are made in 1905-1906 and, um, you know, they could be, ARC speeds are quite variable. I mean, some of them are right and some of them are variable. I'm just going to knock this down, uh, bear with me for a second, I knock it down by, by 1% and uh, that will be minus one and minus one and try it again yeah I'm going to knock the record down by one percent and I think then um, it will be pretty well on the nose uh, because after all, if we're transferring an old record, if it's too, if it goes too fast, it will be sharp in pitch, and it won't last long enough. And if it's played flat, um, it will be slower, and it will last too long. And whenever we transfer a record, the thing we must do is try to replicate as closely as possible the performance uh, in the studio when the record was made. I think. Do you? I don't know. Does it matter? Does it matter? Uh, well, of course it matters, but not to many people. California dance. <laughs>